Uh, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, Governors for Schools webinar. Uh, my name is Oliver. I help to put together the webinar programme here at Governors for Schools. Today we're really pleased to be joined by Rachel Green, Area Education Manager for London East and South East of England at the Careers and Enterprise Company for a session for Governors on careers related, careers related learning in primary settings. Rachel will be taking questions throughout the webinar and you can put these to her using the Ask a, Ask a Question function on your webinar panel. And just a reminder that there will be another session next week on careers related learning in secondary settings and you can sign up for that on our website if you'd like to attend. Uh, this webinar will be available to watch back and share uh, later this afternoon along with the slides from our website and you'll get an email and certificate once this is ready. So without any further delay I'll hand over to Rachel. Thank you Oliver and good afternoon everyone. As Oliver said my name's Rachel Green I work for the Careers and Enterprise Company as an Education Manager and I lead on our primary work as well as our engagement with Governors. Um, having previously held the role of Primary Head Teacher, Careers Related Learning in Primary Schools is, is something very close to my heart. The mission of the Careers and Enterprise Company is to prepare and inspire young people for the fast changing world of work. Much of our work focuses on supporting careers leaders in secondary schools, SEND schools and FE colleges in England, where the requirement to deliver career related learning is statutory. We support careers leaders to deliver high quality careers provision based on the world class standards that are the Gatsby benchmarks, which you may have heard of. We're funded by the Department for Education to support schools across the country through something we call the Enterprise Advisor Networks, joining volunteers from businesses directly with schools and colleges to help prepare and develop a strategic approach to careers education. And we also bring groups of schools together in careers hubs where they're supported by us at a local level to develop meaningful and impactful careers programmes and initiatives. So if you'd like to know more about the work we do in secondary schools and colleges and the associated role of a governor in those settings, please do join me at this time next week, um, as Oliver mentioned previously. So why do the Careers and Enterprise Company also work with primary schools? Have you perhaps considered career related learning in your school? And why should you if you haven't? Well, careers related learning in primary school is, is not simply talking about jobs. It's not asking a nine year old to decide exactly what their future career pathway looks like. Instead, it's, it's about ensuring that they have that opportunity for regular conversation that challenge stereotypes, broaden their horizons and really raise their aspirations in a range of ways. It's about helping them to recognise their likes and dislikes, their skills and how these are applicable and important in daily working life. We all want children to be curious and inspired about what their futures could hold. We want them to start to see the connection between the learning they do in school and the world of work, to recognise the importance of their learning to understand the skills that they're developing and how these skills will help them in their future roles. These conversations, opportunities to explore and ask questions will not only open the eyes of the young people to the possibilities out there, but also those of their families. So the Careers and Enterprise Company really are the conveners of careers education at primary, secondary and college level as it's important to tackle educational is issues from a more systemic standpoint. And as such, we work with schools, different providers, businesses, government, local authorities, uh, local enterprise partnerships and so on to really embed change across, across the whole system, not just in one specific area. And we promote good practice across all areas of the sector as long as it meets the pr principles that signify good career related learning, as we believe it's crucial that primary schools are empowered to make their own choices about exactly how they want to deliver career related learning within the context of their own school. 
So before I talk more about the why, I'm hopefully technology allowing going to be able to share a really short video with you. Um, please let me know, Oliver, if this doesn't show up on screen properly. We can see it. Yeah. This afternoon, we're going to draw people doing different jobs. And the first job we're going to draw is a firefighter. and I'm a surgeon in the NHS. My name's Lauren and I'm a pilot in the Royal Air Force. My name's Lucy, I'm a firefighter in the London Fire Brigade. So who wants to know how to do an operation? So hopefully you can see that this clip has a, a really powerful message, but that it's broader than simply gender stereotyping. Stereotyping, stereotypes based on um, ethnicity. Um, oh, hang on a minute, what's going on there? I do apologize, it looks as if something is still playing on my thing here. Let's just switch that off before we have to listen to any more of that. I do apologise. So I think it's about encouraging people to consider not just gender stereotypes, but those stereotypes based on socio socioeconomic status, background, ethnicity, all of which result in those sort of self-limiting beliefs that can have a massive impact on the pupil's view of their own future potential. It goes back to that old adage, you can't be what you can't see. And how can children have broad aspirations if what they're exposed to gives them a really narrow view of the possible? So the extensive research carried out in this area has helped us to recognise that secondary school may well be too late, for, as most young people have already started to form their views around stereotypes and what might be possible for their futures well before they even set foot inside the secondary school. So, Primary had, education has that really vital role to play in supporting pupils, particularly the most vulnerable, to see a choice-filled life pathway in front of them before they make that transition to start more formal careers guidance in secondary school. As governors, social mobility, the disadvantage agenda, and supporting our most vulnerable pupils and their families may well be high on our agenda. And career related learning may not be statutory for primary schools, but it can be inspirational and motivational, helping those who are perhaps more disengaged to see the link between their learning and their future, to help them see value in learning. Starting younger gives us the chance to enable young people to be more careers ready as they enter secondary school. So that by the time they make transition, they already hold positive views and aspirations for themselves. Now, Education and Employers published a report entitled Drawing the Future, following a survey of 20,000 primary school children, and it showed significant implications for social mobility and equality. 
it revealed that the difference between children's career aspirations from age seven to 17 are absolutely marginal and too often based on gender stereotypes, socioeconomic backgrounds, and, and bizarrely are heavily influenced by TV, film, and radio. On the 21st of January this year, the Department for Education released its long-awaited white paper entitled Skills for Jobs, Lifelong Learning for Opportunity and Growth. Careers education features heavily throughout, but I'd just like to draw your attention to point 103 that states, we want careers education and guidance to be embedded in the life of every school and college. Now, although there was no specific mention of career related work in primary schools, the government have included the requirement to now work with pupils in year seven, whereas previously schools and colleges were only required to work with year eight onwards. Ofsted also are going to be undertaking a thematic review this year, an up-to-date assessment of careers guidance and recommendations to improve practice at secondary level. And it's now considered so vital to the future of young people and the economic recovery of the UK that careers awareness will be built into both initial teacher training and education leadership training. So although careers related learning is not statutory for primary schools, there is a recognition that it is important to start young. And there may be the opportunity to explore this as part of transition work, something that I'll return to later. So before the current pandemic, primary career related learning was, a, was an area of interest for the government and the careers and enterprise company were funded to carry out some pilot work we were funded by the DfE to test a number of different approaches to career related learning. A key part of our work involved the delivery and evaluation of, of a primary programme through 15 different providers. They were all working in different ways with a range of primary schools across the country to further explore what works. Some providers have been scaling up existing programmes while others have developed completely new and innovative approaches. Our fund evaluation report is due out later this year and will outline some of the key findings and recommendation for future work. As part of this, we've developed with the Centre for Education and Youth a primary platform, which I'll talk about more shortly. And this houses a wealth of resource and case studies from our providers, and it's available for primary schools to use now for free. Our work has been shaped and informed by primary head teacher steering group and some key employer partners. And we've also made use of our fabulous network of hubs across the country. You've supported us throughout with excellent examples of innovative approaches to primary learning. Our work is based on some key principles, as we believe there are two sets of mutually reinforcing principles which outline good provision at primary. The first set of principles you can see on screen are derived from a What Works report that the Careers and Enterprise Company in partnership with Education and Employers published in 2018. The report identifies six key lessons of practice for career related learning at primary level. And these principles really help to guide the strategic thinking and planning process when approaching careers related learning in primary schools and are an essential part of ensuring a sustainable and manageable approach. These principles are to ensure the support and involvement of senior leaders, to start early, fully embed careers related learning into the curriculum. And as with all primary learning activities should be personalized and differentiated, accessible to all, and we should we aim to involve employers and parents wherever possible. The second set of principles are the skills builder principles. Now, many primary schools already engage with skills builder using the skills builder framework to help develop those softer employability skills in pupils. The skills builder principles outline best practice in teaching those eight essential skills, and these help to shape the design and delivery of careers related learning. 
used together, these models can inform an excellent overall whole school approach to challenging stereotypes and broadening aspirations. Now, our primary careers resources platform forms our central offer of support to you and primary schools, and it's been really, really well received by the sector. I'd like to take a few minutes just to talk you through the key features so that you're aware of what's freely avail available to you um, to begin or continue your journey of embedding career related learning into your school. So the primary pl uh, platform was built to house easy to use tools, information and resources to give primary educators what they need um, to be able to deliver career related learning in their settings, regardless of their starting point. It's been built following extensive liaison with primary schools in our network and based on the skills and knowledge of our funded providers who've supplied a wealth of material to support careers related learning in primary schools. We've worked really closely with Skills Builder, particularly around the development of a self-assessment quiz, but it isn't a requirement for you to uh, use Skills Builder in your school at all to be able to use this. So there are three key features of the primary platform that I'm just going to talk you through quickly. The school self-assessment quiz is a key feature of our platform and has proven really popular. It requires an understanding of what careers related learning is, but it is a really good place uh, to start if, if you're new to this journey. The quiz was designed in partnership with Skills Builder and is based on those two mutually reinforcing sets of principles that I just talked about. It asks the school to reflect on what happens uh, currently. So even if that's absolutely nothing, it's, it's fine to, to still engage. It has just 21 questions and should take less than 15 minutes to complete. And by the end, you'll get some examples of where things are going well and a suggested starting point for making improvements. It's divided into three parts, exploring, planning, delivering and measuring. And as you can see, even if it is um, rather in, well, in small font, there are a range of questions which hopefully you can, you can read a few of here. So even if you're not aware of any career related learning going on within the school that you work with, it will spark ideas and reflection on current practice and just help you to recognise how much is already going on or what could easily be adapted to form part of a careers related learning plan. The quiz will help you to consider long term goals for your pupils learning and how career related learning could fit within this. It could help you to consider who may be involved in this work and how any small changes that could be made, such as to trips and visits, um, that would begin that journey into career related learning. The second major feature of the platform are the resources. We have several hundred resources available for you to use, each with its own user guide. These resources range from CPD for teachers guides to how to best engage employers, full schemes of work for year groups, through to ready to use videos, podcasts, and other resources. They're fully searchable and tagged, much like you'd find on the TES site, to help staff within the schools you work with search for resources that will really meet their needs. You can search by age range, employment sector, types of resource, just to quickly find exactly what, what you're looking for, as well as the ability to just search like you would do on Google. Previously, the resources have all been from our evaluation fund providers and have been quality assured. And we're now gradually adding to the resources available and continue to build on current content from uh, national providers in this space. The third key feature to mention is the wealth of case studies that are available. We have um, over 20 case studies that bring to life different approaches to career related learning. And each case study links through to the related resources so that you can adapt what inspires you to suit your setting. For example, here's a section of the National Literacy Trust case study, which I appreciate is probably too small to read here and certainly 
you're not going to be able to do it in the time that the slide will be up but it gives you an idea of what you can expect on our platform all the case studies have been reviewed by skills builder and badged with the skills that approach that the approach enables children to practice the national literacy trust worked with us to develop resources to be to meet both literacy and careers related learning outcomes so they include um, a video resource a book list suggesting books relating to different jobs an activity introducing children to a range of careers as well as posters for staff rooms and things like that their approach really helped to show children how their literacy skills are put into action in the workplace and to help them to understand why literacy is so important for their future success so how can your school support pupils to be able to maximize opportunities when they join their secondary schools careers program on transition ultimately how can we enable pupils to be career ready well if this is something that really appeals to you how could you as a governor potentially take this forward now a role recommended for secondary schools and colleges is one of a careers link governor their role is outlined on the slide and is primarily to support the careers leader who leads the careers program within the school or college they offer that support and drive at a strategic level now obviously there's no requirement for primary schools to have a career leader position although we are seeing a huge number of primary schools choosing to introduce a primary version of this role. Now, from our research, the careers leaders who have the greatest impact are those who are either at senior leadership level or who have the clear support of senior leaders and governors, which links back to our guiding principles that career-related learning really does need to be driven by the senior leadership team and potentially part of a whole school approach. So you could perhaps discuss with your governor colleagues or senior leaders the benefits of career related learning. Please do feel free to make use of these slides which you will have available to you after today. It doesn't necessarily require a huge shift, but rather slight changes to help children see the relevance of what they're learning. Consider career related learning in the context of your vision for pupils when they leave your setting. Your school ethos, your values, your vision statement may well speak about the development of essential skills that actually do prepare a young person for their future. Think about linking career related learning to your school priorities. Career related learning can positively contribute to meeting those school priorities. For example, um, you may be wanting to, to raise aspirations or rate, think about diversity and inclusion as part of your aims. It may be that you need to increase attendance or engagement as part of your school priority. Career related learning can work towards that. Really small changes could have a huge impact. For example, it could start in reception with role play, inviting in the local PCSO to talk about their role and help shape the nature of the resulting um, play. This could be face to face or live stream into the classroom, ask them to show photographs of a diverse police force, to talk about the skills they use on a daily basis and so on. Similarly in reception, existing uh, areas of the curriculum such as people who help us could be used to teach about the diversity of people who work in different roles for example help children to explore the term uh, midwife explaining that even though it has the word wife in it it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be female to do this role some schools take a skill per term and make this the theme of assemblies or plenaries in, in lessons. How has this subject helped us to develop this particular skill, such as, say, problem solving? Which job roles need problem solving skills? Perhaps invite in a range of people to explain how this skill is important for them. As governors, how could you support with the range of experience 
and expertise on, on the board. Staff could look at the PSHE curriculum, for example, and explore how this could be adapted to make career related learning more explicit. Subject specialists could explore how, say, one topic per year group could be linked to the world of work in their specialist area to help embed this work fully into the curriculum. There are lots of companies out there who will support um, and help to source speakers for free. So one of those companies, for example, is Speakers for Schools. And alongside that, you have a, a wonderful network on your governing body and in your communities that you could utilise to support uh, the delivery of this. So on the careers and enterprise company resource directory, really aimed at secondary schools, we have a resource that secondary schools in Worcester use to enlist parental support. There's posters, a parent letter, social media communications and so on. There's a link through to this um, so you could explore those resources on the slide, but it could be something that you could adapt to fit your primary setting to encourage parents to engage, to come in and talk to your young people about the role that they have and their route into it or the skills that they, they need to use on a daily basis. Now, whether your school is just starting out this, on this journey, has made a start or already has an extensive programme in place, there are some tips and resources for you to consider to help really fully embed career related learning in your setting. And this is available on our site in a document entitled Tips for How to Embed Career Related Learning in Your Setting. It has suggestions for those who are just developing their thinking through to those who are looking to enhance what they already have in place. And there are hints and tips to suit all settings. So please do take a look, look at that again, uh, the link through from the slide, from the heading there that you can see underlined. Another potential consideration is how you could work more closely with your secondary school on career related learning, particularly around that point of, of transition. I'm currently exploring where there are examples of good practice in this area that we can share nationally. I'm working with multi-academy trusts and all through schools to create new opportunities and to learn more about what works. And later in the year, I'll be producing guidance to support schools interested in developing some sort of career related learning transition activity. So I'm, I'm gonna stop in a moment because uh, I think actually the most value is from that question and answers or discussion around what you think could potentially work. But I just wanted to re-emphasize before I finish that the plat platform that I've shown you today and all of the resources are absolutely free for you to access and use. And we hope that bringing together quality resources in one place will really help primary colleagues to know that there is a one-stop shop where trusted resources can be found. We're always really keen to hear feedback, especially to help us to shape the additions we plan to build over the coming months. So do please get in touch via the email address on screen or encourage um, staff within the schools that you work with to do so as well. Thank you so much for listening. I'm gonna stop talking and see if there are any key questions or points for discussion. Thanks, Oliver. Thank you, Rachel. That was uh, really interesting and lots of practical ideas there to take away. Um, we haven't had uh, many, well, the questions are just beginning to come in. Uh, first of all, though, I wanted to ask um, what role you see uh, careers related learning having in the kind of catch up that pupils are going to be going through as they return to the classroom after COVID? I think that's a really key question at the moment and something that's really being addressed in that skills uh, white paper that I mentioned earlier on. There's, there's obviously been a gap in, in learning. Um, we, you know, the government are trying to find a way of addressing that. But I think the biggest challenge for a lot of young people is around that, that feeling that they've missed out and that lack of confidence. Um, and I think it is about using career related learning to show them what's possible to give them the, the inspiration to want to fill those gaps in learning and to appreciate that what they have to offer is broader than just 
um, academic achievement. It's helping young people to see that the skills that they bring more broadly than just how well they're going to do in their exams when they reach secondary school or how well they're going to do in their SATs, that their broader skills are equally as important and that actually it's about grasping every opportunity um, to develop those skills to help to put them in the best position possible. I think the bit that we talked about right at the beginning about the importance of seeing what is possible, what is out there for you as a young person is really important. There's a lot in the news at the moment about um, the, the difficulties in the labour market, you know, the, the lack of jobs, people becoming unemployed, and, and young people will be seeing that in their homes and in their families. So it's important to really build that, that feeling of positivity that there are opportunities out there um, and to give people the inspiration to work towards them. I don't think I answered your question at all there, Oliver, so do feel free to put it back to me. Um, I just went off on a bit of a rant, so apologies. No, that's great. I think that's really useful. Um, Simone has asked um, about um, approaching people to talk to primary age children. Um, she said that um, one thing they struggle with is is finding people confident enough to talk about their work to primary age children. Are there any tips uh, on how to help with this? We do actually have a, a document on the primary platform that's designed for employers to try and help them to understand how to um, to shape what they're saying or what they want to do in a, in a primary setting. So there are, there are specific um, guidelines there to support with that. Um, it is difficult. People do find that they, they lack confidence, but maybe that's where this whole virtual world can help. Perhaps people will feel more confident to do something virtually rather than face to face. So having a live stream into a classroom where the employer can appear on screen, but they're not actually in front of the young people. I've found for some people, they feel more confident doing that. I think it is important to, to have time before a session um, where you can really explore what's going to be covered and talk to them about how best to engage young people um, so that it becomes a really worthwhile session. The more interaction we can have between the employer or the visitor and the young people, the opportunity to ask random questions, which you quite often get from, from primary students, um, you know, they put the hand up to ask a question and tell you that their granny's coming for tea or whatever it is. But that ability to have that interaction is really, really key. So I'd signpost you first of all to the document on the primary platform and then thinking about meeting with the person before the session just to talk, talk it through, make sure it's shaped properly um, so that they feel confident and maybe making more use of that, that virtual uh, rather than face to face. That's great. Um, Christine has asked whether there's any specific resources or highly differentiated resources for uh, pupils with uh, SEND. There are on the on the platform, there are specific resources for SEND students and we're looking to develop this further. So if there are key things that you think would be really helpful, please do um, email us and let us know. Or if you've seen any really good practice anywhere, again, please do let us know. It also might be worth you having a look at the secondary um, resources platform where there is a, a large section specifically around um, SEND provision and support for career related learning in, in um, SEND settings. So it may be worth having a look on there as well. Great. Um, Jane has asked about technology um, and she's saying she's very keen on children learning digital skills uh, mm. and that there's a tendency that uh, digital skills are underappreciated by teachers. Um, how can we better get um, appropriate devices and connectivity into the hands of children, do you think? That is a really good question and it's not just a, an issue for primary um, and it is an area that employers are incredibly keen to work with schools on as well. So um, if you haven't already linked in with your local STEM learning, groups I would recommend having a look at your local STEM learning group who, who will have um, people who can support from local business as well as a huge amount of resource um, so that would be my first port of call. I think 
so if you do have a local employer who who uses um digital regularly which is pretty much every uh, employer please do encourage them to come in and talk about that perhaps not not even just to the young people but to come in and talk to the staff about the kind of skills that maybe we would be hoping to develop i know as a as a primary teacher um it's it's quite often about a confidence level within the teaching staff to know what to deliver and how we don't necessarily feel that we have all of those skills and as you know the skills around the digital world move on so so rapidly and so quickly that perhaps we should be using um, employers to support cpd for staff as well as potentially um, opportunities for young people to learn i imagine the the curriculum has moved on hugely around um, digital engagement since I was teaching, but there were an awful lot of, of uh, programming, um, uh, I can't think of the word, uh, resources that you could use, Scratch and, and so on. I'm sure there's an awful lot more now that I'm not aware of. It's not my area of expertise, but I do feel the employer links are vital in ensuring that uh, staff and students have an appreciation of the digital skills that are so important. Great, thanks. And Dolly has asked uh, whether there's any ideas or tips uh, about attracting employees into, into primary schools in the, in the first place. Again, I'd sign you, signpost you towards our resources platform. There are quite a few um, things on there. I think in terms of engaging employers, it's really important that you know what it is, sorry, why you want to engage employers. You know, what is the intent behind what you're doing? Employers are very keen to engage with schools. Admittedly, a lot of them don't see the need to, to reach out to primary. They think that uh, speaking to secondary school pupils will be more beneficial to them in terms of their talent pipeline. But I think if you can approach them when, and sort of talk to them in, in the way of saying, OK, a lot of our young people, our students will have already made their decision by the time they leave primary school that science isn't for them, for example, that um, they're not good enough to do a career in um, computing or whatever it is. And about how, how engaging young people at an earlier age to break down those stereotypes of I'm not the sort of person who can become a doctor or whatever it is um, will really help them to increase their talent pipeline it might well be worth you linking in with um, the local in, uh, the LEPs the local enterprise partnerships in your regions to find out what the the missing um, skills are for your area what are the growth sectors um, and where do they feel the gaps are going to be in terms of the young people coming through um, for the employment market and maybe using some of that data to go to the relevant employers to say we need to be encouraging young people into this sector um, from an earlier age so that they're really considering it rather than dismissing it before they've even started to make their option choices. Um, would you um, suggest that primary schools start introducing uh, ideas around uh, apprenticeships, that kind of thing, or is that too soon? I don't think it's ever too soon. I think um, we really struggle um, in secondary as well to, to encourage students and more importantly, parents uh, to understand the different routes and different possibilities. So there are a lot of programmes out there at the moment talking to primary school children about the route into university, for example, but there's very little about other routes and it can be quite um, disheartening to some young people who don't feel that that university is going to be the right route for them some young children even even at age six or seven they know that they love learning more practically and so showing them that there are options like that that will get them to exactly the same place that they can still learn to degree level through an apprenticeship through learning more practically is, is nothing but motivating in, in my opinion. Um, so the more we can share about the very, very different routes, uh, the earlier, the, the better. And again, as I said, making sure that parents are aware of this. Primary schools are in a really positive position in terms of primary engagement. 
uh, parent, sorry, parental engagement, which tends to drop off a little bit in secondary schools. So if you can utilise that, that engagement with parents to help them to understand the variety of routes that are potentially open for their children, um, then that will really help them all longer term. Thanks. Um, Hannah's asked whether there's an up-to-date list of uh, career options somewhere, um, because, you know, there's a possibility we get fixated on, you know, the, you know, existing uh, or existing understanding or maybe an old-fashioned understanding of the jobs market. Um, is that something you offer through your, through your resources? Yes, if you're looking for a sort of a broader picture, I would go to our resource directory that's the, the secondary level resource directory. So it has uh, information on there about different pathways, different routes into employment. It has um, lots of information about the labour market, the sorts of jobs that are out there. I would recommend having a look as well at the um, National Career Service website, which although is um, the, the actual advice part of it is aimed at, at older students and older people. Um, there's a huge section on there about job profiles that are well worth having a, having a look at, it tells you pretty much every job that in existence. There are sites such as I Could, um, which has hundreds and thousands of video clips um, talking to people in a, in a range of um, roles. BBC Bite Size have lots of video clips of people from, from all sorts of different jobs and case studies and profiles about people in different roles. So there's an awful lot of information out there. Um, and then big, big groups like the NHS do a lot of work specifically aimed at engaging at primary level as well. There's a huge amount of resource. Um, so do look on our platform. Um, we are going to be increasingly adding more and more resource like that and links out um, to, to those sorts of resources. But yeah, there's plenty out there. That's great. Well, uh, unless there's any, any more questions, um, I think it's uh, time to thank you, Rachel, for a, a really interesting and useful presentation uh, with lots of stuff to take back to our boards. Um, just a reminder that um, Rachel will be holding another session for us uh, next week on careers related learning in secondary settings so if you'd like to join or indeed know someone else you might you can sign up from our website if you have any further questions uh, please do forward them on either to info at governorsforschools.org.uk or to rachel and i can uh, pass them on um, this webinar will be available to watch back on our website uh, later on today along with the slides um, but uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you at a, uh, a Governors for Schools webinar again very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.